All right, so now I want to talk about repeated zeros. Okay, so everybody remember this from the previous video. A polynomial function of degree n has at most n distinct complex zeros, right? So a fifth degree polynomial uh, can have at most five different complex zeros. Okay, but it may have fewer than that, and that usually happens when you've got repeated zeros. For example, so let's graph the following functions. Get out your calculator. Graph x minus 3 times x plus 2 squared. All right, so now that you've graphed that, you should look something like the following. All right, so over here at negative 2 and over here at 3. Everybody agree that 3 is a 0 because you plug 3 in, it makes this whole thing go to 0. And negative 2 is also a 0 because you plug negative 2 in for x, it makes all this go to 0. All right, so your graph should look something like coming up hitting there, going down, make that a little better, and going up. Okay, so it looks something like that. The point is that we're just hitting the x-axis at negative 2, but we're going through the x-axis here at 3. All right, so now graph the second one, x minus 3 squared and x plus 2 cubed. Again, 3 is a 0 and a negative 2 is a 0. So 1, 2, and 1, 2, 3. And this time the graph does something like... Everybody see that? Okay, and we're not being perfect on the graphs here. We're really just concerned about what's happening on the x-axis. So the question is, what's happening at those zeros of 3 and negative 2 on, graphically? Since they're real zeros, we're hitting the x-axis at those, at those zeros, you know, negative 2 and 3. But notice that on this first graph of f, we're only touching the x-axis at negative 2. We're going through the x-axis at 3. But, and down here on g, we're going through the x-axis at negative 2, but we're only touching the x-axis at 3. Everybody agree there's only two options you can have. You either pass through the x-axis or you're just going to touch the x-axis at specific x value. All of that boils down to the multiplicity of a zero. And all that's determined by how many times that factor occurs. So like for this one down here that I've got, I'm circling in g. This x plus 2 cubed means x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. Follow me? We just write it as x plus 2 cubed. So we would say that negative 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 3. For this one over here, we would say 3 is a 0 of multiplicity 2, because the exponent's a 2. All right? OK, so now let's write that up in a general note. All right. <coughs> in general, a factor x minus a raised to the k power gives a repeated zero, x equals a, everybody agree if x is a, then this is, this is zero. <clears throat> and we say that it has a repeated zero, x equals a, of multiplicity k, whatever the exponent is. Now note, if k is odd, then the graph crosses the x-axis at that x equals a. That was like when we had, um, uh, that was like when we had back here, uh, x minus 3 to the first power, got an odd, so it passed through, and x minus 3, excuse me, x plus 2 to the cube power, so it passed through on negative 2. Okay? If k is even, then the graph touches, but does not cross the x-axis at x equals a. Right? So that was back here with the squares. x plus 2 squared, we're going to just touch the x-axis at negative 2. And x plus excuse me, x minus 3 squared, we're just going to touch the x-axis. If this would have been a 4 instead of a 2, we'd have the same situation happening. It'd just be touching the x-axis. Okay? So, that's the note. <clears throat> if you have a repeated 0, then if the multiplicity is odd, uh, then the graph crosses the x-axis at that 0. If the multiplicity is even, then the graph just touches the x-axis, but does not cross at x equals a. So, suppose you had f of x equals x minus 7 um, to the fourth times x plus 1 uh, to the sixth times x minus 8 to the seventh. I'm just making something up, okay, obviously. So the zeros are 7, negative 1, and 8. 7, 
negative 1 and 8. Okay, But 7 has a multiplicity of what? Multiplicity of 4. That's even. Therefore, the graph would just touch the x-axis at x equals 7. Okay, Our goal is to, is to know as much about the graph before we ever graph it. Right? If, if we can't, or if we've got a graph, um, what the function could be, uh, working backwards. Okay, so this is the theory part. All right, so at negative one, we've got a multiplicity of six, so that's even. So that means when x is negative one, we're also just going to be touching the x-axis at negative one. And then at eight here, it has a multiplicity of seven, and so the graph would be passing through the x-axis at x equals eight. All right, so that's the idea. Right, for repeated zeros. Um, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.